Hey everyone, this is a continuation of my series on optimization problems. In this series, I'm just doing examples. So in this one, we're going to look at the maximum area of a rectangle in a parabola. And the way that these videos work, you want to pause and try parts of the example when you're prompted to do so. And there are always free guided notes available at divideandconquermath.com. And hey, if you, maybe you'd consider it, maybe you could subscribe to my channel or share my channel with some friends if you think that it's handy. Okay, so let's get going here. What is the maximum possible area of a rectangle with a base that lies on the x-axis with two upper vertices that lie on the graph of the equation y equals 4 minus x squared? Okay, so first things first, with all optimization problems, you want to try to draw out the situation. So you might not totally understand what this is talking about, or maybe you do, but where you want to start is first draw this parabola. So you need to draw this parabola, and then I want you to draw a rectangle inside of it, and then I think you'll, you'll get the idea. So pause the video, hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw this as well. So here's my graph, and I'm going to just make it nice and big so that I can really get to the details. So let me draw it. Okay, so you can see I've marked some points here, and now, okay, this might be the world's worst looking parabola. Let's, uh, can I, can I do better? Maybe. I don't know. I feel really nervous. Okay, well, pretend that looks good. <laughs> All right, so now what I've got to do is I've got to put a rectangle in here, so let me draw it with this color. So just draw whatever rectangle that you want, really, just to kind of get a sense of this. So what we're trying to do is figure out what is the the largest rectangle we can put in this. So what would those dimensions be? So we're going to use this to kind of help us figure this out. So the first thing that you've got to do, so of course rectangles have the area of length times width. But what I want you to try to do here is with your picture, try to now transcribe the length and the width in terms of the graph. So everything's now got to be in terms of the graph. So I think a hint if you're not sure where to start. Think about just the most general coordinates for this point here and then think about how that might translate to length and width. So play around with this, hit play when you're ready. Okay, so this point here, I have no idea what it is, but you know it's in that form x comma y. And I know what y equals, right? So y equals 4 minus x squared. So I can actually, instead of just calling this x times y, I can call this 4 minus x squared. So this is the most general point I can possibly make for you know any, any point on this. And, and because of this, so now I can also figure out my length and my width. So from here to here, so from here to here, this is the length x. Therefore, if I go this whole length here, this is going to be the length 2x, right? So it's going to be the same length on each side. So there's one part, and then for the other part, so then if I'm trying to figure out what is my height or my width or whatever you want to call it length, this is this is going to be 4 minus x squared. So when I'm trying to figure out my length times my width, it's actually all in here. So it's this part times this part. And remember, this is not drawn to scale at all, so you might be thinking, oh, it's just going to be a square, but we don't, we actually don't know what the optimal is. So even if this looks like, oh, I drew a square, so that must be what it is, I, we've got to actually prove that, right? Okay, so now I want to rewrite this as um, 2x times 4 minus x squared, which of course then you want to distribute that, so that's um, 8x minus 2x to the third. Okay, so the name of the game here is optimization, and in this case, so all optimization problems you have to maximize or minimize, and you can see just by looking at this, right, this is asking for maximum, so we want to maximize this equation. And of course, maximizing would mean take a derivative and set it equal to zero and then figure it out. Now, something I talked about in my last video that I actually want to address before we get started with all this, it's very important that you consider the domain of this. This is a closed domain that helps us out big time. So what is the domain of this? Again, you might want to pause the video here and just note that for yourself. You'll have to think about it for a second. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so my domain, well, x, of course, will have to be bigger than zero. 
But then as far as, so what is the like biggest X I could possibly have? It, well, it would be all the way out at this point here, right? X cannot exceed two, otherwise you get past the parabola. So X has to be somewhere between zero and two for this to work. So this is our closed domain, which is just gonna make our lives easier when we start trying to actually optimize this. If you don't know why closed domains make our lives easier, I will drop a link in the comments just about what kinds of things we get with closed domains. There's, there's a whole lesson on that. So I'll just leave it at that. Okay, so time to maximize, which means time to take a derivative. So let's do it. So I've got my a prime in this case is gonna be eight minus 12 x squared, or not 12, six, I swear I can do math. Um, okay, so eight minus six x squared. So if I set that equal to zero, so eight minus six x squared and set it equal to zero, well, I could factor out negative two from that, and then I get three x minus four, um, three x squared minus four equals zero. And if I solve this, which maybe you wanna pause and just finish solving this, so you know then that x is gonna equal plus or minus the square root of four over three, and there's a lot of simplification I can do with this. I'm actually gonna just evaluate this as a, as a decimal when I plug into a calculator. So you can technically simplify this farther. I'm, I'm being a little, uh, I'm, I'm taking a shortcut here. But when I look at this, so I know that the negative square root of four over three will not work, right? Because it's not in the domain. So I can actually exclude that point. So the only point I have to consider in this case is just the square root of four over three, the positive square root of four over three. Okay, so now because this is a closed domain, the only possible points that are gonna be maximums or minimums are going to be zero, two, and this critical point that I found. Now, hopefully it goes without saying, if I plug in zero or two back into this equation, that equals zero, so maybe I'll just note that. So a of zero is the same thing as a of two, which is also gonna equal zero, so I'll write that out. Okay, so now if I plug in a of the square root of four over three, well, if I evaluate that, this is gonna be 6.1584 in a decimal form, or you could leave it in a, in a radical form. You get something, um, you get the equivalent if you put, punch it into your calculator. So this would be then the, obviously the largest point between zero and this choice, so this, this is the maximum. So now we have to actually answer the question, right? What is the maximum possible area? So now I can answer that and I just wanna summarize that in a sentence. So the maximum possible area is 6.1584 units squared. So notice that this problem didn't actually include a, a unit with it, so we just say unit squared, whatever that unit might be. So now we've answered the question. So that's everything for this particular problem. So I'll go ahead and leave you guys here. I have some other videos on this, so be sure to check the links in the, the description if you want to see my other videos. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.